Arthur Morgan, a man of few words and many layers. So I just got done playing RDR2 for the first time, and man, when I tell you, that was some experience. So, in this video, I'd like to explore some of the things that hit me while playing the game. Side note, if you do not want any spoilers, please click off now. Also, I will not go over every detail of the game. It'll just be a quick overview of some of the events. So let's get into it. This is Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's the way. We get introduced to the Vanderlyn gang right from the start of Chapter 1. For those who played the first Red Dead Redemption, you might be expecting to see John Marston front and center. However, we are introduced to Arthur Morgan for the first time as the protagonist. The game kicks off with the gang fleeing from a robbery gone wrong in Blackwater. This opening sequence sets the stage for the game, giving us a glimpse into the gang's harsh realities. Dutch van der Linde, the charismatic yet increasingly unstable leader, is determined to keep his family together and evade the relentless Pinkertons. Through Arthur's eyes, we get to understand the dynamics within the gang, their loyalty to each other, and their desperate need to start over somewhere far from the law's reach. As we navigate through the treacherous snowy mountains, we begin to see the complexity of each gang member, from the hot-headed Micah Bell to the resilient Sadie Adler. This initial chapter not only establishes the dire circumstances the gang finds themselves in, but also sets the emotional tone for the rest of the game. It's a story of survival, loyalty, and the inevitable struggle to find a place in a rapidly changing world. From chapter two onwards, we start to see the true value of Arthur to the gang. From the moment they set up camp near the town of Valentine, Arthur's contributions become indispensable. He's not just a muscle for the gang, he's a crucial player in every operation, whether it's earning money, gathering supplies, or handling delicate situations. Every town the gang settles in eventually turns into a bloodbath forcing them to move on. This recurring pattern underscores the gang's increasingly precarious situation. The calm before the storm never lasts, and each new settlement brings new challenges and conflicts. We see the profound impact of Dutch and Hosea's leadership with every plan they devise. Dutch, with his grand visions and persuasive charisma, contrasts with Hosea's more cautious and strategic mindset. Their plans, whether it's a daring heist or a complex scam, often spiral out of control, reflecting the growing tension and desperation within the gang. After Valentine, the gang moves to Rhodes, where they get entangled in a bitter feud between two powerful families, the Braithwaites and the Greys. This conflict, like others, ends in violence and betrayal, pushing the gang further into chaos. From Rhodes, they move to Saint-Denis, a bustling city that starkly contrasts with the rural settings they've been accustomed to. In Saint-Denis, the stakes are higher, and the risks are greater. The city's complexity and corruption offer new opportunities and dangers, further testing the gang's unity and Arthur's resolve. Throughout these moves, Arthur's role remains central. His actions and decisions profoundly impact the gang's fate, and we see his character develop amidst the turmoil. The constant need to relocate not only physically but also morally highlights the fragility of Dutch's dream and the inevitable downfall that looms over the gang. In Saint Denis, chaos ensues with the introduction of Angelo Bronte, a powerful crime lord. Dutch, now dreaming of an escape to Tahiti, sees his plans unravel at every turn. We also meet Rain's fall and his son Eagle Flies, whom Arthur helps, revealing his compassionate side amidst the gang's turmoil. Adding to Arthur's complexity is his relationship with Mary Linton, a woman from his past who reappears during the story. Their interactions show a different side of Arthur one filled with regret and longing for a life that could have been. Helping Mary with various issues, from rescuing her brother to assisting her in dealing with her family's troubles, Arthur demonstrates a depth of character and a yearning for redemption. These moments with Mary highlight Arthur's internal struggle between his outlaw life and his desire for something better, further humanizing him. The turning point comes when Dutch kills Bronte, and feeds his corpse to an alligator, showing his increasingly ruthless nature. The gang then attempts a bank robbery, but it goes wrong. Hosea and Lenny are killed, and John is captured. This marks a significant decline in Dutch's mental state. With his moral compass gone, he becomes more erratic and dangerous. 
In a desperate bid to escape, the gang boards a boat to Cuba, but ends up shipwrecked on the island of Guarma. Here, all hell breaks loose. Dutch's sanity frays further, and Arthur witnesses the decline of his father figure, though he still trusts Dutch to find a way out. We're introduced to Colonel Fuser, adding another layer of conflict. The gang manages to survive and return to the mainland, only to face immediate trouble with the Pinkertons. Forced to move once again, they set up camp near Ansberg. It's here that Arthur is diagnosed with tuberculosis, a pivotal moment that makes his story even more poignant. This diagnosis is a turning point for Arthur, prompting deep reflection on his life and actions. His struggle with the disease adds a layer of tragedy and urgency to his journey, making his character's arc even more special and heartbreaking. Arthur's illness forces him to re-evaluate his loyalty to Dutch and the gang. He begins to see the true nature of those around him, leading to a more profound and emotional narrative. His attempts to do right by the people he cares about, despite his failing health, highlight the depth of his character and make his story unforgettable. Now in Chapter 6, with every one of Dutch's plans having failed, and the gang's trust fading, Arthur continuously tries to find the right way to go about things. However, Dutch further loses himself, with Micah whispering in his ear and adding fuel to the fire. Dutch now tries to manipulate everything in his path just to get his way. More deaths and more failed plans follow, and with Arthur's mortality looming over him, he becomes the only one truly caring about the future of the gang. In contrast, Dutch drifts further away from who he once was. We learn of Micah's betrayal, and by then, Dutch van der Linde is dead in spirit. The man left is unrecognizable, having chosen the idea of getting rich over the son he raised. Throughout this turmoil, Arthur's conversations with Sister Calderon become profoundly significant. Her wisdom and compassion offer Arthur moments of introspection, allowing him to grapple with his sins and seek some form of redemption. In these conversations, Arthur reveals his deepest fears and regrets. He admits to Sister Calderon that he is afraid, afraid of dying, afraid of what lies beyond, and afraid of the legacy he will leave behind. Sister Calderon's unwavering kindness and spiritual insight provide Arthur with a sense of solace. She tells him that it's never too late to seek redemption, and that his efforts to help others, despite his past, are what truly define him. This guidance helps Arthur find peace within himself, even as his world collapses around him. Her words encourage him to reflect on his life and actions, driving him to make amends and protect those he cares about in his remaining time. Arthur's conversations with Sister Calderon are pivotal in his journey, highlighting his internal struggle and his desire to be remembered for something good. Her influence helps him face his mortality with a newfound sense of purpose, striving to leave behind a legacy of compassion and bravery. This inner transformation adds depth to Arthur's character, making his journey all the more poignant and unforgettable. Arthur's condition worsens, and in a tragic turn he loses his beloved horse, symbolizing the end of his journey. Despite his failing health, Arthur chooses to help John escape, showing his ultimate act of selflessness. In a final heroic effort, Arthur delivers one last act of bravery and kindness, hoping that those left behind can still find freedom and happiness. This final chapter encapsulates the essence of Arthur's character, his loyalty, his sense of justice, and his unwavering desire to do what's right, even in the face of his impending death. His journey, marked by personal redemption and sacrifice, makes his story truly special and unforgettable. In the end, Arthur faces off against Micah in his weakened state, showcasing an Arthur Morgan who has accepted his fate. But then, Dutch appears once more. We see the deep betrayal in Arthur's eyes, realizing that after everything he gave, the blood, sweat, and unwavering loyalty, Dutch chose someone he had known for just six months over the son he and Hosea had raised. In these final moments, Arthur's hard, labored breaths echo the weight of his struggles and sacrifices. As Dutch and Micah walk away, leaving him behind, Arthur looks over at the sunrise. Despite the betrayal and the pain, he finds a semblance of peace, knowing he did everything he could to protect those he cared about. His acceptance and peaceful state of mind underscore the depth of his character and the profound journey he undertook. Rockstar masterfully crafted Arthur's character to be more than just an avatar for the player. Through his trials and growth, they made us feel as though we were living alongside him, sharing his burdens and victories. His evolution from a hardened outlaw to a man seeking redemption resonates deeply, turning his story into a tear-jerking experience. We build our own relationship with Arthur, feeling his pain, fear, and moments of hope. In the end, Arthur dies alone but content with his fate. 
As he looks over at the sunrise, it's not just a moment of peace for him, but for us too. We see a man who, despite his flaws, tried to make amends and do right by those he loved. This poignant conclusion makes Arthur's story unforgettable, leaving a lasting impact on us. It's a testament to Rockstar's ability to create characters that live on in our hearts long after the game is over. The game continues into the epilogue, but the reason for this video is to share the immense character development of Arthur Morgan. Arthur was a complex man who was never entirely bad, but not entirely good either. Throughout the story, we witness him grow as a person, facing his mortality and choosing a new path in his life. He transforms into a man who protects others and strives to be unselfish, ultimately finding peace within himself. Arthur's journey is symbolized by the deer, representing moral peace and a life of meaning. Even if people forget him, Arthur's actions ensure that those who do remember him will have good memories of him. His life, though cut short, was lived in the best way he could manage in the end. I should note that this recount is based on my playthrough, and others might have different experiences, especially with the symbolism. Some might encounter a wolf instead of a deer. However, I wanted to share my journey. If you haven't played Red Dead Redemption 2 yet, I highly recommend it. It's truly a masterpiece of storytelling, where you'll discover profound lessons about life and morality. Rockstar has set a high standard with this game, and I'm eager to replay it to relive this extraordinary experience once more. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, God bless you and have an impactful day.